Hi everyone, we are going to see a topic from building planning. The topic is the components of a building. After listening this uh, video, the students will be able to list out and explain the components of a building. Coming to the topic components of a building, this picture represents various components of a building starting from the foundation till to the parapet wall. Uh, it is showing all the components. So we'll see one by one. So first we'll be starting from the foundation. So this is the foundation part and next to foundation we have the plinth and uh, this is the ground floor and over which we have the wall units that is masonry units. Then we have the floor and uh, the rooms have doors and windows for access and then above the uh, wall uh, above the wall you have the roof slab then you have another floor first floor and here you can see various components also uh, and the top of the roof is called as uh, ceiling this portion is called as ceiling and also we have so many building services inside the building to get various advantages and then uh, here this is representing parapet wall and uh, this is a railing over the parapet this picture represents a cross-sectional view of uh, a wall masonry wall and here you can see uh, there are some portion below the ground level and some portion above the uh, ground level so the portion below the ground level are called as substructure it is mainly called as foundation and the stu uh, structural components above the ground level are called as uh, superstructure we'll see one by one so here you have the foundation as substructure the foundation is a basic component, uh, important component. It's the lowermost part of a building structure, and this is this will be resting on the soil below the ground level. All the load from the building will be transferred to the ground through a foundation. In case of a load bearing structure, uh, the load transfer mechanism will be from the slab to the wall, and then it will be transferred to the foundation, and it is again transferred to the uh, ground safely. But in case of load, uh, but in case of uh, framed structure, we'll be having beam and column arrangement. So the uh, load will be transferred from slab and then to the beams and then to the columns. Then it will be transferred to the foundation. So the main function of uh, the foundation is to distribute the load evenly and safely to the ground. And uh, in frame structure, uh, footings are generally used as a foundation to support the structural load of the building. And we have so many uh, types of uh, foundation and footings and uh, it is mainly uh, classified into shallow foundation and deep foundation in which uh, the shallow foundation is again classified into isolated footing, combined footing, stepped footing and then uh, step footing and then uh, raft or mat foundation. In deep foundation we have uh, classified as a uh, pile foundation, uh, caseon foundation, pier foundation and the foundation size and depth is totally dependent on the structural and site uh, condition ground condition and there is uh, no specific uh, standard dimension for it for small structures like uh, houses residential houses we can have the foundation uh, at least 1.5 meters from the ground level and then we have this is this portion is footing and entire portion we have discussed and the portion above the ground level so this is called as plinth level uh, or generally we say it as plinth this is the offset created between the ground and the superstructure and it is made by uh, uh, constructing a brick wall from the ground level to this uh, level and the main function of the plinth level is to prevent the entry of moisture from the ground surface to the building structure and the plinth height must be minimum of uh, 45 centimeter that is 3 feet from the ground level so the standard dimension to be uh, maintained for plinth level and then if you have the uh, wall structure up to the plinth level there will be a gap between the ground level and and to the plinth level so this area will be filled with earth and uh, uh, it may be soil filling between the plinth wall so it uh, uh, it is very essential to fill the open space left between the ground level and the plinth level and this uh, earth filling soil filling must be very well compacted so that the floor uh, will uh, will be having a sufficient hard base hard surface base and then uh, this uh, uh, earth filling must be uh, done to the top level of the plinth level and you can use uh, earth fill like soil sometimes coarse agri can also be used waste materials can also be used brick bats can also be used as a 
earth filling material and uh, then we need an uh, we will be doing an important uh, uh, application over the plinth level that is called as damp proof course it is a uh, it is shortly called as dpc it's a layer of waterproofing material like uh, asphalt or uh, waterproofing cement at the plinth level to prevent the ingress of moisture from the ground to the uh, masonry structure so superstructure walls will be constructed above the dpc so that no dampness is arising from the ground to the wall and uh, uh, if dampness is uh, available in the superstructure it reduces the strength of the wall and it creates unhealthy environment and also it uh, creates many defects in uh, plastering work as well as in painting work so that the maintenance cost will also increase and in case of plinth beams will be uh, provided above the ground level so that dpc is not required and because of the plinth beam itself it will be acting as a, a dpc layer to restrict the uh, ingress of moisture or dampness and uh, generally this dpc will be laid on brick masonry construction up to the plinth level and width of the dpc will be same as that of brick wall and the thickness may be uh, varying from 2.5 cm to 5 cm this is about damp proof course and then you you will be seeing uh, this portion so this is nothing but your flooring so flooring is an important component of a residential building it is one uh, which is uh, giving you attractive and pleasant look of the uh, uh, house and the flooring flooring may be uh, made by uh, laying a tile over it and there are different types of uh, flooring available and also dependent on uh, materials uh, available locally and uh, the standard dimension for uh, a flooring is we need to provide uh, the flooring above the earth filling with a base concrete uh, the base concrete will be of uh, 1 is to 2 is to 4 ratio and uh, the flooring material will have sufficient uh, thickness and strength so this is a requirement for a floor and then you have the superstructure walls so these are the vertical component of any structure uh, this wall masonry can be done using stones or bricks or you, you can use concrete blocks and so many things are available nowadays and uh, for con uh, for uh, having a wall you can have two uh, we have different types of bonds so we will be discussing the bonds in the upcoming lectures and bricks uh, are generally used for constructing uh, the ma wall masonry and uh, this is usually provided to uh, have the protection against uh, the external environmental agencies and doors and windows are provided uh, in the walls for ventilation and to the access to the building and uh, in, cons uh, in considering the wall uh, walls it may be a single thickness a single brick wall or double uh, brick wall and single brick wall may be having a thickness of 100 mm and double thick uh, double brick wall will have a thickness of 230 mm so this is about the wall masonry uh, unit and then we have rcc column in case of framed structure the columns are the vertical members which is constructed to support uh, the structural frame and the load coming from the slab and beam will be transferred to the column and column transfer uh, the loads to the footing safely and uh, in normally uh, we have two types of columns uh, one is uh, architectural column and structural column architecture column is mainly used to increase the aesthetical appearance of the building while structural column will take the load from the building and it will be transferring to the ground and column will be designed as per the uh, load requirements and for minimum dimension a structural column should be restricted to uh, 230 mm and uh, next one is uh, the sill level so sill level is a base point of any window in a house and uh, it is very important uh, to ensure the evenness in all windows so sill level be, will be maintained for all the windows and a sill in a, is a height which is ensuring the proper amount of light that is entering the house and also it provides easy habitat to look uh, outside through the window without any discomfort and it provides a solid base for window installment and the sill level of uh, any house should be around uh, 3 feet that is 900 mm so the sill level will be measured from the uh, floor, floor level and the next one is lintel so above the opening you will be having a, a concrete structure that is called as uh, lintel so lintels are constructed from reinforced cement concrete it will be always provided over the wall openings like doors windows and uh, this will be taking the load coming onto the window uh, and the door openings and uh, it uh, in general uh, lintels are, uh, are provided to safeguard the door and windows from the excess load coming onto the 
a structure uh, which is above above uh, the opening and uh, the standard dimension for the lintel is uh, the uh, the same as that of the thickness of the sorry width of the wall and then thickness can be uh, uh, 4 inches to 6 inches and then uh, we move on to the ceiling so ceiling is not separate part it is a bottom face of any slab ceiling is the most important part of any room because it can be decorated to increase the aesthetic appearance and uh, plaster of paris is a material that is used for making false ceilings and it is a location where we can hang uh, decorative items fans uh, etc to uh, increase the a uh, architectural view of the building and normally we'll have a, a, a ceiling height uh, from 9 uh, 9 feet to 10 feet and uh, it can be more or less as per our requirement and the next one is the sun shade so sun shades or uh, the weather uh, shield this is a structure which is constructed above the window projected outside from the window face the main function of uh, the sun shade is to restrict the direct entry of rain water and sunlight and uh, this will be always uh, constructed uh, as a rcc member and uh, length of the member there is length of the sun shade will be is equal to width of the window plus 0.15 bearing on either side so the width of the uh, uh, sun shade will be uh, from uh, 45 cm to 60 cm and then in case of load bearing structure uh, we won't have beams but in case of uh, framed structure we have columns and beams so beams will be made up of rcc and uh, it is a important component in any frame structure the beams are horizontal member which connects the columns on both the sides the main function of uh, the beam is to take the load from the slab and it has to be transferred to the column and generally beam to column connection is direct support while beam to beam connection is called as indirect support and uh, in some in some cases the beams will be supported by two columns and sometimes it may be used as a uh, beams can be used as a cantilever beam and uh, the minimum dimension for uh, uh, beam is uh, 230 mm by 230 mm and uh, next one is uh, the roof roof slab rcc slab it's a essential structural component of a building uh, for any structure which is providing the protection against environmental factors like sun wind and rain generally all roof structures uh, resting over the side walls or uh, uh, and required some anchoring so that wind and other mechanical impact will not be destroying the roof and uh, roofs may be having different shapes uh, flat and sloped roofs are commonly uh, used uh, type uh this roofs can be constructed uh, as a rcc uh, member or it can be a stone slabs or sometimes tiles can also be used and generally uh, rcc slab will be a minimum thickness of uh, 120 mm and then we have the co- next component as a door so doors are the main entry and exit point of any house without doors there will be no security and uh, we can uh, we cannot have any access to one one room to another room so do, uh, doors will also have a lock key facility so that we can lock the house by locking the door and we can go out freely and uh, these doors will be made up of strong materials like steel wood and iron and so that they cannot be easily uh, breakable and the standard dimension of uh, door uh, may be 1500 Uh, so sorry, 1000 mm to uh, 1200 mm in width, and the height will be 2100 mm. That is seven feet almost. And the next component is window. So windows is uh, the one which allows the fresh air and light to enter the house. And uh, windows are provided at sill level, and the height will be extended up to the lintel level. And uh, standard uh, width of the window opening may change. Uh, depending upon the requirement but generally its height will be uh, 1.4 meter from the sill level and then the next component is uh, the parapet wall it is a low height wall built along the edge of the roof terrace walkway and balcony the parapet walls can be constructed using different materials like uh, reinforced cement concrete steel aluminum glass etc and uh, it is usually constructed as a single brick wall the height of the wall will be around uh, uh, 45 cm to uh, 600 cm and uh, 
over the rcc roof you have another component called weathering coast it's a protective layer to restrict the movement of moisture and water through the roof slab for dpc uh, there is a for a weathering coast uh, on the roof the flexible materials are used so that uh, which provides a lesser number of joints like lesser number of joints and the next one is coping so coping is a structure that is constructed on the top of uh, parapet wall to protect the rain water directly stored on uh, stored on the brick wall masonry and the main function is to drain off the rain water during the rainy season and to improve the aesthetics of the wall structure so these are the components of a building